everyone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Inurere podcast series. As usual, I'm your host, Bidemi Adedure. Today, we are exploring ways in which women in African communities play a crucial role in the African giving space. And as you can see on your screen, you are seeing two beautiful women that we will be chatting with today. This episode will explore the powerful role of African women in driving community-focused giving practices across the continent through leadership, support, and economic initiatives. We are honored today to have Falakemi Adeshino and Malingo Sechipeta join us on this episode. Let's talk about Falakemi a bit before she says hi to us all. Falakemi is the founder of the Do Good Charity Initiative. She's passionate for she's a passionate advocate for the rights of children and women with a legal background and a dedication to nonprofit management. Falakemi has made a positive impact on over twenty five thousand individuals in various states in Nigeria. She holds a master's degree in sustainable humanitarian action and she is an award winning innovator and humanitarian. Falakemi also plays pivotal roles, serving as the country lead for Giving Tuesday Nigeria, the Lagos State Coordinator for Good Deeds Day International, and an ambassador for the Global Impact Network. Driven by a profound commitment to effect change, she focuses on uplifting the lives of children and women in undeserved communities while advocating for the eradication of poverty among these populations. Wow, wow, wow. Now, before we hear from Falakemi, you are seeing someone else on your screen. So I'm going to introduce her as well. We are honored, really excited. Like, in my mind, I'm dancing and I'm saying, finally, we have here Malingo Sechipeta, who is an accomplished development professional with extensive experience in project management, policy advocacy, and of course, humanitarian work. She is the country lead for Giving Tuesday Zambia. Let's talk about our remarkable journey. She, we've seen Mali engage with various organizations to drive change in communities across Africa. So it's, it's not just a Zambia thing. She has a strong background in sustainable development. She has a passion for empowering vulnerable populations. And her journey is one of determination and a commitment to make a difference. Please join me in welcoming Mali Gunther Chipeta. And I really hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Mali, hi. Hi. Hi, hi Bidemi. I'm super excited to be here this morning. I am so glad you're here. Like, I have two amazing women leading giving in their country. So, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. I'm excited to have you both. Thank you. Um, we're gonna Thank continue. you so much for having us. <laughs> Thank you too. Don't worry, don't worry. The time for questions and answers is coming, so you will have to say something. And it's actually going to start now. We have the generosity exercise happening now, because that's the segment. You're going to pick a number between 1 and 30, and then you would answer a thought-provoking question around generosity, obviously. So I'm going to start with you, Mali peak between 1 to 30. <coughs> I'll pick 26. Why are we picking 26? Yeah, because my birthday is on the 26th of March. So, yeah, let's see what 26 give, gives us. Uh, I think you're going to love 26. So, what is the best advice you have received about giving and generosity? Mm. Uh, so the best advice that I've received is from a number of people is uh, to never give up on generosity, to never give up on uh, what I believe in, and uh, to just uh, continue, continue pushing. And I have definitely seen the benefits of uh, being generous and uh, loving it. Absolutely. Paula, let's come back to you. Pick between 1 to 30. Remember 26. It's gone. <laughs> All right, I'll go with number seven. Why seven. are we picking the seven? <laughs> I, well, I feel seven is for perfection, so 
<laughs> I had a feeling you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number seven. What have mm. you received that touched you deeply? Tell us about it. Oh, okay. So <laughs> last um l- last month we we opened an IGM bank in my organization. It was a new initiative and so I never knew my my management team some of our volunteers were actually planning something for me because August was my birthday, you know, so <laughs> I didn't know that they were planning some. But when they came up with the gifts, they came up with different gifts and I saw it, I was shocked because I never expected it actually. I was really shocked and I actually told them that, you know, for my birthday, most time uh, I don't usually get gifts like that. So it was, you know, it was really very touching. Yeah. Oh, that is so sweet. I absolutely yeah, cool. love that. Thank okay, you. I have just one more question for you both, and it's the same question. Okay. So, Inurewe is the theme of this podcast series, and I feel like Falakemi will understand where that comes from. Inurewe means someone who is selfless, someone who has a clean heart, someone who has a mind of goodness, kindness, lovingness, and good fortune. Now, that sounds like one word having so many meanings and that's just the beauty of our african languages so i'm going to come to mali first so i can give falakemi some time to think about another word in our language that represents generosity so mali is there a word in zambia or in your community in zambia that sounds just like inurere what is it called I would say Zambia has a lot of languages, but then I would say in one of uh, the languages which is called Kutandizila, it means to give help, it means to be generous, yeah. Kutandizila, did I pronounce it right? Kutandizila, yeah, good, correct. I love that. Hmm. Okay, Fala, let's come to you. What term would you give us that represents it? generosity aside from Inurere because I know you are from the Yoruba speaking <laughs> part of Nigeria. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I think um Itorianu or um I think Itorianu like, you know, doing good. Itorianu is like you know you are doing good to someone. So I think that's another another way to put put generosity. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. So let's, I'm going to now sort of ask my own questions. We are going into the conversation proper. Are you ready? Yes, yes, we are. Okay, let's come to (laughs) Mali. Um, You've been in the development state, um, development space for years. You've seen firsthand how women play a key role in their communities. Can you share, you know, some knowledge around the fact that African giving traditions has a, is, is deeply rooted in solidarity. Okay. You know, like Africa in general, Africans, we are givers. Africans were generally um, generous. Yeah, so, um, you know, Africa, when um, we are actually women, in particular, because we're talking about women, women will not see a neighbor suffering. Women will not see, for, they'll be the first, if you have a funeral, they'll be the first ones to come and help cook, organize the food. Um, your child is sick, they will come and help you. They will escort you to the hospital. When you're giving birth, if your relatives cannot come, you have you find that women in the neighborhood will come and help with bringing charcoal, with coming to help with the cooking, just coming to help with the cleaning up. So generally, we are uh, Africans are generally givers. Africans are generally generous, and I think this cuts across most African uh, countries. We're not individualistic, but whatever we do, we try and do it as uh, a community. We try and uh, just stand for each other as communities and uh, help where we can. And most of the time you find that it's women doing it because it's just like, I think giving is is genetically just inborn in the women to just, uh, they don't want, you know, where you just don't want to see someone suffering, you don't want to see your neighbor suffering, you don't want to see your child suffering. So you just go out and do what, uh, what, what you can. So... 
I think it's uh, it's just it's just in us. Uh, it's just in African women. It's just in us to just to be generous. I totally agree, Mali. I think for us women, because we do so much at the same time, we are juggling a lot of things at the same time. When someone helps us or renders any form of service, we tend to appreciate it because we feel like, oh my God, you've given me such a relief. And we also want to, we want people to also experience that as well. So we always band together, especially when there's a huge project or there's a function or there's a wedding. You see women gathering around exactly. to just ensure the bride has some time to herself and all of that. I find that very interesting and amazing to see. I'm going to go to Fala now, but I'll come back to you shortly. Let's talk about challenges. We've seen that women give a lot women give their very self literally to the society can we talk about the challenges women face in trying to participate in the society trying to engage in these giving practices maybe name two challenges if you can and what you are doing to address these challenges all right thank you very much bidemi so um I remember that when I met uh, Mali in Portugal during the <laughs> Giving Tuesday conference, and I, I remember we talked about family, we talked about you know how the development work is going in Zambia and in Nigeria. And one of the things that usually comes to mind when you see two young women maybe doing something in the development world is where did you put your children? Like, you guys are out of your your you know your community and like you that you, you have children they believe that um you know the stereotype is there the cultural norm like when women face this societal expectation it actually limits them from their leadership role because a lot of people will feel that because you have children you cannot participate in this kind of a thing you are going to have divided attention so all these, you know, cultural norms and, you know, because of the society expectations, it actually limits a whole lot of women from participating in leadership role. Another point is, you know, limited to access, um, or access to resources. When most women, they actually face a lot of financial independence. They have less financial independence, it, and it actually restricts them from their ability to contribute um, significantly to anything. So when you bring them together, it's always a problem, like because they are not financially dis, um, independent. So another another challenge is you know balancing multiple roles. I remember when I finished my law school and. I got a job with a law firm and I, I got married just right immediately after my law school and I remember one of my boss then, the word she said was that, how are you going to manage being a lawyer yeah. and raising a family? That you are not even up to a year <laughs> working with us and you're already married. <laughs> So I love, um, you know, balancing yeah. multiple roles most time. It's always a challenge to, um, for them to have these leadership roles. And I believe that one of the solutions that we can actually provide for this kind of, you know, problems like um, limited resources is having like a financial empowerment program providing literacy, financial literacy, and support programs that could actually make women to participate more. You know, there are a lot of um, women out there who don't really understand, who don't really know how to go about their finance. So I believe that financial empowerment is very important. And also, I think pr promoting awareness on education on gender equality and the importance of women in philanthropy can actually challenge stereotypes it's very important awareness and education is very important mm. so and also i feel that having an inclusive policy organizations could actually adopt policies that that would promote inclusion of women 
you know, in leadership and decision-making rules. It's very important. I think policies are, you know, policies should should be something that we should take very serious in our country, in Nigeria and in other African countries. Because women are, when you see the, the, the percentage of women participating in a whole lot of things, it's still very low, considering that a, a lot of women out there are still at the back, trying to see that, okay, maybe they can also maybe their voice could be heard so i think those um three points like solutions the awareness financial um, empowerment programs and inclusive policy would actually help thank you thank you for like me um if we are going to talk about stereotypes i think we would we would be in this podcast for a long time <laughs> so I, I i would not say some of the things that are coming to mind because I heard a few things that I'm like oh my god yes yes and yes so I'm coming back to Mali Mali oh. you have worked on so many community projects right when women get involved in philanthropy what are the real measurable changes that happens let me break it down let me make it simple is there any community project you've done that had women contributing so well and led to such impact Tell us a story about one of them. Um, yeah, Pidemi, you know, I've done a lot of uh, community projects and uh, most of the community projects that I've done, it's women that give, it's women that are involved. Right now we have a water project that is running and this is uh, this is just one woman who's funding the, uh, the water project. It's a very expensive project of putting boreholes, but she's just taking it up herself, upon herself to just come and... Um, help the women and um, what we have seen with the water projects is that we've seen women going into farming we've, we empowered them with uh, uh, farming inputs and um, they're not going hungry they're selling their vegetables at least they have food on their table and this is a woman who just wants to see that women are at least doing something that women are at least empowered and most of my like the projects, the volunteers that I have, you find that it's women that are just coming on board. It's women contributing their time. It's women contributing to the finances. It's women, women giving their time to just come and cook for the children in the community. So I have uh, seen women doing a lot in this journey and just giving, giving, giving themselves up to just help. And in, in particular, this same lady that I'm talking about that has just gone out of our way she just says, no, Mali, we have to do this. We tell her there's this community where they need water, and she just say, we have to do it. We need, because those women, the children, if we don't give them the water, then they're going to suffer. So we need to empower them. Let's do something to just empower the women. And uh, just some three weeks ago when we had um, the Generosity Survey for Giving Tuesday, we actually had a launch where we were, we were launching the report to the community, and we just had to... We just had to empower one of the women in the community because she's just she's given herself up to just go all out and help the neighbors. You know where she's even taken up uh, orphans in her house, and she stays in a small in a two-roomed house. But then she's just doing so much, and we just had to go all out and just empower her. With uh, we took her to a tailoring school. We also just empowered her with a sewing machine to just uh, to just appreciate her and to tell her that she can go. She can. She can go ahead with the work that she's been doing for the community and at least she'll, be, and she'll have an income to even help more. Yeah, so women, uh, yeah, so women are, are, are just there to make an impact in the community, to improve the community. To, you, you can't really, you, you, it's, um, if you talk about measuring, it's something that you cannot even measure because the, the, the work that the women are doing. Yeah, it's difficult to even measure it, but then, they are doing something. I have seen it in, in my organization. I've seen women. I've seen women give, and uh, which just also in, inspires me to do more because this is a fellow woman who's just given up herself to just come and entirely like, like I would just say fund the organization. She like the projects that I do in Zambia for Giving Tuesday. She entirely funds them all by herself. Even when I'm trying to give up and she says no 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 we need to help that child we need to help that woman who is in need so let's go ahead and do it yeah i um i mean i i am aware of how much we give women as <laughs> just as i am how much we give back to the society the fact that we give 
even when it looks like we don't have enough, we give. So yeah. clearly, this is not a question of you have to have enough to give. It's just a question of you have something to give. And that's <coughs> what we yeah. do every day. I want to ask one last question, and this is to both of you. Earlier this year, we started a campaign called Women Give. We asked women to reflect on their life journey and share when a woman invested in them. Obviously, Women Give is broad, so clearly we wanted to see how women were also supporting women. I want to ask you both this question. Could you take a moment to reflect on your journey and then tell me about a woman that invested in you and probably how her contribution in your life, you know, led you down this path for example so i'm coming to you for like mm-hmm. okay thank you very much okay so um i would say one 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 person that could actually re- well going back and we are still together up to this very moment and she's always very supportive uh, i see her as more like my mentor um she's my <laughs> she might she's my boss's friend when I finished law school, the law firm I first worked with, I met her through my boss because she was a friend to my boss. And up to this very moment, because she's in the development world, and when um, I came up with um, founding Dugu Charity, uh, she was one of the person I went to meet that, oh, I want you to be on the board of trustees. And ever since then, any any program I'm having, anything I'm doing, you always see her there. She's always there. She would she would always come around. She would always support and so she's she's more like my mentor, Mrs. Francis. <laughs> oh my cheek hurts from smiling so much. <laughs> um Mali, I've gotta come to you. Tell us about a woman that has invested in you in any way. I have a lot of women, but right now I'll talk about one that we are with uh, on this forum, <laughs> uh, Flakemi. Uh, you know, our journey, it started as a joke when we met in Portugal. And you know where we are just talking about the projects that we are doing. I was talking about what I'm doing in Zambia, her telling, about, telling me about what she's doing in Nigeria and where we're just sharing notes. We, we shared a lot of notes, spent a lot of time together. And she told me about um, uh, 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 this, uh, uh, the masters that she was doing in sustainable humanitarian action. And, you know, um, and she was telling me, you know, just apply for it. I'm sure they are going to pick you. And I kept on saying, you know, for like, I can't apply for this. I mean, look at the requirements that they are asking for. I don't think I qualify and I'm not going to do it. But, you know, this is a person that uh, kept on pushing me. She kept on sending me WhatsApp messages. Mali, have you applied? She kept on sending me the link until I just ended up giving in. And uh, today it's a success story. I'm also a, 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 a graduate in, uh, with a master's in sustainable humanitarian because of uh, her stubborn faith. And, <laughs> yeah, because of her stubborn faith and just uh, pushing me. And that's a relationship that I don't take uh, for granted. So I'm saying, obviously, in uh, as women, we should... This is somebody who shared the information. And most of the times, people will say, no, women don't share information. Women keep things to themselves. But I think when there's an opportunity that comes, Paula Kemi will like, tell me, Mali, there's this. Have you seen this? Can you try this? When there's something, I'll tell, I'll tell Paula Kemi, there's this. I'm having difficulties with this. How can you help me? You know, so it's just an, a relationship that has just uh, that has just been uh, built, and uh, it's uh, I actually call her my senior <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to to uh, sustainable humanitarian. I call her, you know, like I always say, you give respect to seniority. Yeah, so that's a relationship that I, I'll leave to treasure and uh, appreciate Giving Tuesday for because we came to know each other because of Giving Tuesday. So there yes. are benefits in generosity. There are, you know, sometimes you feel like mm-hmm. there's nothing that you're doing. You feel like you're just giving out. But then here, you know, that master's was very expensive. It was $20,000 mm-hmm. and it was a full 100% scholarship. Everything paid for. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm going to cry, but I will not cry. (laughs) That is the sweetest I have heard. Like in the history of this series, I've been hearing amazing stories, but this is 
<laughs> this is amazing. Um, let's also talk about this relationship between you and Falakemi Mali. Uh, when we started the Women Give campaign at the beginning of the year, at the hub level, Falakemi showed interest, obviously, and she has been able to spotlight over 20 women yeah. under yeah. the Women Give umbrella. And the next thing I heard is, Mali is also doing this thing. I'm like, yes, that's the spirit. I love it. And now we are yeah. doing the Youth Give Africa contest. Obviously, Falakemi being the amazing superhero that she is, joined the yeah. campaign and because of our influence we had other country leaders join and then yeah. i heard i'm going to tell mali about this and she did tell you <laughs> and next thing i know yeah. you are in the whatsapp group <laughs> i was so glad when that happened let us talk yeah. about how you are owning these campaigns i think it's beautiful to see how you you see the opportunities that lie within am amplifying generosity to these demographics Tell me about women give in Zambia and tell me about youth give in Zambia and then I come to Falake Big. Uh, okay, so about the women give, you know, like you know, I wasn't even like you said, Falake me started the campaign and she was telling me, Mali, why don't you like you have a lot of women that give in Zambia, why don't you highlight them on women's day? Why don't you just highlight so that they, you appreciate them? She actually went all out and made a poster for me and said, Can you use this? <laughs> So that you can just highlight uh, uh, the women that really support you, and uh, there are quite a number. But I think I highlighted over 20 on our Facebook page. And I know, baby me, I still owe you. I need to send you. <laughs> I need to send you that 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 Google file, which I'll I'll send very soon. And yeah, so it's something. You know, this is something that. Uh, I think we take for granted. But then when you appreciate somebody mm -hmm. who has been. Um, who has been helping or who has been supporting um, um, a community generosity and you just highlight them and you just tell them that we appreciate you, we appreciate the works that you are doing. I think they also feel good to know that, okay, yes, I'm doing something and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually contributing something to society, even if it might not be much, but it's making a difference in somebody's life. It's making a difference in that child's life. It make, it's making a difference in another woman's life who might be more vulnerable than I am. So it's actually a very, very good campaign. And um, the more you highlight, uh, like the women that uh, that uh, help with generosity, you find that they want to do more. You know, they'll even call you, is there something that I can do? Maybe I have shoes for a, a vulnerable child. I have this that I can give. Yeah, so it's actually a very, very good campaign. And I'm glad that I'm, uh, I, I am part of that uh, campaign. And I'm glad that I highlighted some of the women that have been supporting the projects. Um, um, Falakemi, let's let's come to you. Tell me something about Women Give in Nigeria. <laughs> Let the world know what you've been doing. Okay, so the Women Give campaign, we we actually felt like, okay, how, how can we possibly recognize and give these women visibility, most especially these women in the development work. So we thought to ourselves that, okay, International Women's Day is coming. It's a great opportunity to, you know, reach out to these women and create a platform for them to, to shine, <laughs> to put their work out there. So, and that was why we came up with, we, we, we joined the campaign, Women Give, so that we can highlight and celebrate the, the contribution of these women. And we're able to spotlight over 20 of them and they were very happy we received different you know messages talking about how um you know like appreciating us for um for encouraging them and it, it's it's a form of support from giving tuesday nigeria to these women so it's um it actually give, give them visibility because I, I i i were able to actually talk about what they are doing in on our media pages and you know it was it was a success story <laughs> so we are looking forward to next year and right now we are having youth give campaign so youth give campaign is on and we are we're going to be having a second edition of the giving voices instagram um live series whereby we would have different people coming youth um, young people coming to tell their stories how they've impacted you know their community so that's it 
Thank you so much, Mali and Falakemi. You are amazing. Now, a quick announcement to everybody listening. With respect to the Women Give campaign, Giving Tuesday is gathering stories of empowerment, of generosity, and impact across the continent that celebrates women. We are calling on women to give voice, to inspire, and accelerate the investment in women's future. So if you can join us, if you have a story to share, Please send us a video, send us a text, tell us something, give us, you know, all of these amazing stories that we're hearing right now. If you have something to share, we are happy to listen to those stories. We're going to include a link um, to the form where you can do this right here as you're listening to this podcast episode. Also, if you've got if you got to this point, we are delighted to see that these stories have touched your heart. And if you are feeling stirred and you want to dive deeper, there's a whole community of incredible journeys and moments of impact waiting for you. Feel free to join the Giving Tuesday movement. All you have to do is go to givingtuesday.org and you are gonna be amazed by what you see. Thank you for like me. Thank you, Mali, for joining us on this episode. I am so glad we did this. I'm really happy. And I pray that this podcast episode comes out as quickly as possible so people can hear amen, amen, amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Thank you so much. And bye, everybody. Amen. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.